Good morning. We're starting out with some flooding concerns. A flash flood watch goes until 10 a.m. north of the interstate where we had some concerns overnight. That threat now really, though, shifting south of the interstate. We've got a flash flood warning for parts of Newton County through 10:30 this morning uh, where we got over three inches of rain very quickly. So some concerns there. We've got some locally heavy downpours around Eureka Springs, Branson, and Branson West, and then headed over to the east of Springfield, Mansfield, Mountain Grove, Plato, and Houston in Texas County, seeing a a lot of these clusters of some uh, locally heavy rain and lightning there. So we'll keep this threat with some showers through the morning. 71 degrees in Springfield right now. It is 68 degrees in Ava at the bus stop. Uh, we'll have some rain and thunder. You want to make sure to grab the umbrella this morning. And then by this afternoon, we'll keep the clouds and much cooler temperatures at 83 degrees. Storms will still be possible this afternoon, and one or two could be strong to severe with 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail. But you could see the coverage in storms decreases by this afternoon. By tonight, we set up that heavy rain where the front stalls this time south of the interstate, so we might need some more flood headlines for that. Then we keep scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. Temperatures still in the lower 80s. So uh, the rain and the clouds will cool those temperatures, give us some relief from the heat. We start to shake that front a little bit by Saturday, a chance of showers and storms with that temperature at 84. Joe Warren. All right, it's time for the annual Crane Broiler Fest, where people in Stone County enjoy carnival rides and, most of all, barbecue chicken. I, I want some chicken right now. I don't think it's ready yet, though. <laughs> Let's check in with Hannah Zettel, who's live in Crane with a sneak peek of that festival. Well, Lauren and Joe, good morning. It's still raining, but at least the sun's coming out, and hopefully it'll lighten up just in time for the rides, which start tonight at 6 p.m. And, of course, they run through Saturday, and the festival does run through Saturday. But the chicken, you talked about the chicken. I can't wait to try it. That's going to be Friday and Saturday, and I'm back with the director. You know, he wears many hats, but for now we'll call him the director, Nathan Quick. Now, Nathan, tell me a little bit, you know, for people who might not know, what exactly is a broiler? The broiler is a young bird, um, grown to a specific size, uh, so it's it's a tender bird. Right, so you're gonna fire up the grills out here. It's a, how how many feet? 50 feet long. 50 foot long, five feet wide. A lot of charcoal. Yeah, a lot of charcoal. Do you know like exactly how much? We use about three and a half tons of charcoal over the two days. Oh, that's crazy. And so, tell me a little bit about the cooking process. How about how long does it take? Oh, the birds are on the grill for about two hours, um, and we just rotate them and, and keep spraying them with, with a seasoned oil to keep them tender and stuff while they cook. Sure, sure. And a little earlier we were talking about, you know, one of the great things about the Broiler Fest is the community really does come together. So the high school, you know, different clubs. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what it's like for the whole community to come together. This is a 100% volunteer event. Um, there's probably two or three hundred volunteers with manning the booths or cooking chicken or serving chicken, cleaning tables. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal for our community. And it's great. It's going to be well worth it. You know, the rain's going to clear out, I have hope, I have faith. <laughs> but yeah, so it's going to be happening right here in Crane now until Saturday. Reporting in Crane, Hannah Zettel, Ozarks First. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah, to some breaking news now. A man has died after being stabbed last night in Springfield. Police responded to this incident on West Walnut Street at about 9 o'clock. The victim was taken to a hospital and died shortly after arriving. Police do have a suspect in custody in connection to this, and we're still tracking some details on this. We will keep you posted on OzarksFirst.com. Moving to some education coverage now for you. Evangel University is trying to make reductions in energy and water usage on campus, and now we'll have more money to help due to a $300,000 grant provided by the Sunderland Foundation out of Kansas. The money has helped the school upgrade nearly 800 lighting units to LED in two halls on campus and also gave way to new plumbing. More than $26,000 in savings are projected from those improvements. Some Missouri power customers could see higher rates. Liberty Utilities has submitted a rate increase request to the Missouri Public Service Commission. Liberty operates Empire District Electric. The commission has 11 months to review the request. If approved, it could mean a roughly 6% rate increase per month for residential customers who use about 1,000 kilowatt hours. Liberty Empire hasn't asked for a rate increase in four years and says it's invested more than $330 million in a system-wide upgrade since 2016. 
We have some political coverage for you now. Governor Mike Parson has announced a special session coming up to address car sales tax allowances. The special session will begin on September 9th and run along with the veto session. Here's what it'll focus on amending a state statute to allow the sales proceeds of more than one vehicle, trailer, boat, or outboard motor to be used as a credit against the sales tax owed on the purchase of another vehicle. Remember, the Missouri Supreme Court ruled that the sales proceeds of only one vehicle may be used as a credit against the sales tax owed on the purchase of a new one. So during this session, the legislature may amend the state law to allow for the sale of multiple vehicles to be used as a credit. This amendment would line up with the Department of Revenue's prior practices and what consumers have come to expect. House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid calls the special session unnecessary, though. In his statement on Facebook, Quaid cites health care coverage and weak gun laws. Quaid says, quote, there are several issues that demand immediate legislative attention and would justify the cost of a special session. Creating another unnecessary tax break for a handful of people is not one of them. Moving to your medical coverage now, a new warning about painkiller addiction and how it can start after a common surgery. About 5 million Americans choose to have their wisdom teeth removed each year. Dr. Chad Brummett studies pain at the University of Michigan and says despite research showing that a combination of acetaminophen and ibuprofen is superior to treat pain, dentists are still prescribing too many opioids to young adults. For many, dental care such as wisdom teeth extraction is the first opioid exposure. Could be like 50,000 kids each year becoming new chronic opioid users after just something simple like a wisdom tooth extraction. And also for you now, Dr. Brummett's research found that simply filling an opioid prescription after wisdom tooth surgery more than doubled the odds of continued use among, among patients who had never used those painkillers before. The American Dental Association has released updated guidelines recommending use of alternative pain relievers and a maximum seven-day supply when opioids are necessary. After updating its guidelines, dentists wrote almost f half a million fewer prescriptions in 2017 compared to five years earlier. To some more local news for you, women entrepreneurs and small businesses at all stages are invited to attend the 2019 SCORE E3 Women's Conference. The conference will begin at 8 a.m. at the Doubletree Convention Center located on Glenstone Avenue. The conference will include breakfast and will have networking and exhibitors throughout the day. Don't forget, Joy Robertson of Ozarks Live will MC the day's events as well. New resources are available for Arkansans who need help with mental health and addiction. According to the governor, a new crisis helpline is up and running. Trained staff will refer Arkansans to local and community-based mental health providers and drug counselors. According to the governor, the number of licensed providers across the state has increased to more than 500 percent since 2017. Prior to this time, Medicaid did not cover and reimburse recipients for drug abuse counseling or mental health counseling. Now it does, and that opens up a whole new avenue of resources that are available. The new DHS Crisis Center helpline is open Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That number is 844-763-0198. A Missouri farmer blamed for running the largest organic food fraud scheme in U.S. history was found dead Tuesday of carbon monoxide poisoning. Police sound, found Randy Constant in a vehicle in his garage Monday evening in Chillicothe. This is just weeks before Constant was set to begin his 10-year sentence at a federal prison. Constant falsely marketed non-organic corn and soybeans as certified organic on a massive scale. All right, here's a look at what's coming up for you on CBS this morning. I'm Tony DeCopel. Coming up, a department store succeeds where others have failed. How it does great business working with online retailers. That's coming up on CBS This Morning. And a few quick trends. The first one, a rocket launch getting ready to happen at 9 a.m. down in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Hmm. That is to put a better GPS system in the air and will help our armed forces um, kind of see what's on the ground. And so the countdown is going on for that. That's a Delta IV rocket and wow. the improved satellite with GPS is the main uh, changer there. I, I want to be there. They definitely need That's it up there, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, we're also talking about the XFL. That's big, right? The St. Louis Battlehawks. What do you think of the name? I want people to sound off right now. It's a little strange, right? Mm.
It's a lot of syllables. It's a lot of syllables. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tough. Anyway. I hope they pick a better name for the MLS team. There you, you go. Know? This XFL league starts next February. So there you go. We do need to send someone to the movies Ooh, real quick. Really we, do. What do we do. You have we do. We do. What's going? Lisa Hill. She says she loves comedy, and her favorite movie of all time is G.I. Jane. So oh, there you very go. Nice. I love some comedy as well. Congratulations. Very nice. Um, and we've got some storms out there today. 83 degrees by dismissal, much cooler with some showers and storms. The front stalls through uh, Friday and part of Saturday, but it will take away the heat. All, All right. right. Everyone take a movie day if you can. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. We'll see you back here soon.